I haven't worked with a micro for ages, so that's really, really funny for me. So, um, good, I hold it quite spontaneous as well. So if there are questions, please just feel free to raise your arms. So as we are um, just a few people, we can keep it very interactive, okay? So I really invite you to participate as much as you would like to. Throw your questions at me, throw your suggestions at me. I'm happy to kind of twist and tweak in the run. But obviously we're gonna speak about mindset, as I said already. We speak about the subconsciousness, which is always included when we speak about mindset, obviously, and how to influence this, which means as well first, in the first place, actually access it. Um, there are misconceptions about money, which is what we kind of bring together with limiting beliefs. Sometimes the misconceptions, the misconcepts, are already the limiting beliefs. The limiting beliefs are those ones that are actually stored and kind of anchored in your subconscious. So they kind of are the program that run you from the back and you don't really realize that. Um, and I'm gonna take you on a little money love date, which basically just means money is always a bit of thing that, and that's why I put on the first, um, on the first slide, money and other dirty things. It's like, we sometimes even say money and sex are the dirty topics because people really kind of get awkward speaking about it every once in a while. There are people obviously that love talking about sex, other people love talking about money. We know that. Um, but it's definitely one of the topics that has a lot of kind of emotional connection to it. Right, who am I? Why am I in front of you? <laughs> so these are just a few things that kind of relate to my person. To give you a little bit of my background, um, I come from movement um, at one part of my career. So I have been a dancer, I'm a movement teacher, I in Bali as well teach gyrotonic and pilates and work with people on injuries. And I work a lot actually through movement on emotional blockages as well. Through that I actually got a lot into the subconscious mind and more a psychological approach. I as well have been working in corporate um, most of my life before, before I went um, out to seek my own path. And um, so I studied business, I taught yoga. Then I started teaching Pilates. I went um, to work with Audi, the automotive industry. And um, I worked with artists quite a lot before that. That's why I actually worked with Audi. I did um, event management and um, then I did marketing and brand communication. And then from there, I decided to actually stop doing these two things and reunite them. So I became a coach. And I started working with the people that I've been working with together before in corporate and started coaching them on more health-related matters. And that's how I came to Bali. That's about three years ago. And similar to you, it's not that long, but I haven't left really. Um, I might leave next year for a little bit longer because at the end of the day sometimes it is a bit of a bubble as you might know. So we do need to leave every once in a while or we kind of keep on turning ourselves in the same round. But for the moment I'm still here and I work with people pretty much all over the world. So I'm working with entrepreneurs these days in more like a leader um, position and executives. So I'm still working with uh, very similar people. And I went, I still teach movement, as I said, but the people that I work with um, rather online, I work on mindset, basically. It's a lot health-related topics, but it is a lot about um, rather like blockages, overcoming the blockages, limiting beliefs, whatever it is. All right, um, we're going to get pretty much right into it. So if you come to the talk that is called Unstuck Your Money Mindset, I imagine that there are some thoughts that kind of brought you to it. Is anyone willing to share already? You're really good at giving it away, the money. Wonderful belief, right there. It's really annoying, yes, I imagine that. We're going to get to that, that's for sure. Anyone else has some beliefs, some things, like a sentence that keeps on coming up when we speak about money? 
That is a very common sentence as well. The the root of all evil. Anyone else has like a Yes, please. She has to work really hard to get money. I know that belief quite well. Yeah. It leads you every once in a while to too hard work, right? Yes. Get that. Anyone else? Okay, so it, you're scared of the scarcity mindset, like you're just scared of the lack of it eventually. Right now you have it, but you're just scared to lose it eventually. Okay, yes, I understand. Any more of these mindset kind of things? Yes, please. Oh, too much money makes her stay in comfort zone. Can you explain that a little bit more? Lazy. Too much money makes you lazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand. It makes you very comfortable, very kind of, mm -hmm. yeah, great. That's good beliefs. If you have more, just throw them out. I think I'm just going to repeat it, but thank you so much. It's enough micros in the, in the scene. So let's jump into it because um, demystifying the root of all evil. Money itself is nothing else than paper, actually, or coins or whatever, right? So money in itself is not good, is not bad, it's actually just currency, you know? And you probably have heard someone say before, money is energy, right? And that kind of relates as well, back in the days, like if you scan a few years back, there wasn't money, so people exchanged services or goods instead of paper, right? And there might be a future where we exchange like, you know, the cryptocurrency, so that is blockchains that we might exchange from, for a value, right? So money in itself can't be good, can't be bad. It's just, it's just a transfer of energy in a way, okay? And um, the transfer of energy as well is important, and I'm going to get with you through your, the nice beliefs that you actually just said. Um, the transfer of energy as well is important. When you create a product, a service, Whatever it is, you put energy into creating that thing, right? So you already put something into it. And then what you get back is obviously energy as well. And this is just in form of money. Sort of agreeing with that in a way? Good. So if you would just, and I go further. So these are a couple of beliefs or even sentences that come up a lot in people referring to money that kind of underlay like a bit of a negative sort of belief system or belief system. We can as well say it's not necessarily just a belief system. Sometimes it really is on the aware level. We speak about that in a bit. But how we actually kind of speak about it, how we kind of phrase things that come with money, all these things are obviously related to emotions, right? So it brings out emotions. So the emotions that we have with money um, sometimes more in that kind of framework. Um, so if you exchange money for energy, just put this in the beliefs that you said. What was yours again? You're good at? So she's very good at giving energy away. You are scared that, it, that you run out of it. She's scared that now she has a lot of energy, but she eventually is going to run out of the energy. What was your belief again with the phone? What was her belief? What was your belief? <laughs> Sorry, you don't have a sticker. Oh, Dia. Dia. Nice to meet you. So she has to work really hard to get energy, right? It's just a little mind trick, sort of, um, that you can do. And another thing is kind of, okay, breathe in, but do not breathe out. Or turn it around, breathe out, but do not breathe in, right? It does not make sense, like there is no balance in it. So I kind of give you these examples because money is a similar thing. It's a giving and receiving. So it kind of just relates to the value that you give. You receive value, right? So you receive energy. Energy can be kind of anything actually at the end of the day can be called energy, all right? 
If you have questions, as I said, just raise your hands. I'm totally fine with interrupting. We are like seven, eight people maybe. So totally easy. Good. That was just a little kind of turn around on the money itself. We're going to speak a little bit more about it. But now we're going to speak about the mindset. Now, every time we speak about mindset, limiting beliefs, when we actually work on the subconscious mind, and I'm going to explain that in a little bit, a bit more, the concepts that are behind it, it's not only... So you might have a very deeply rooted negative kind of mindset for money, right? Or a... Um, like a mentality for money. So it reflects in a negative kind of feeling for money. But the belief might be a bit stronger in that, so it kind of affects all the areas of your life. So money is just one of the things that we feel the blocks pretty obviously, but relationships, health, success, all these things are very affected by our belief system. Everything at the end of the day is very affected by our belief system. There's one important thing that I always say when I speak about the mind. So what is the mind for you guys? And you can always as well say, where is the mind? Because sometimes it already kind of raises a lot of questions if you want to place the mind. So where would you position the mind? In the head. That's the thing, that's the brain, right? So is the money the brain in the hide? That's really beautiful, yeah, that's really beautiful as well. The brain and the mind as well sometimes get kind of clinged together. At the end of the day, the brain is an organ, right? You can kind of examine the, the activities of the brain, you can cut it open, you can touch it, you can see it. The mind no one can see, right? So the mind actually is a theoretical concept, only that. So our intellect created the mind, right? So we could as well say it doesn't even exist. But it helps us, like all the theoretical concepts, to describe things like we think actively, we reflect, we are able to reflect on things that we did or said, the relationships we have with things or with people, our emotions, and I'm going to get a little bit more into it. We're going to set our mind. <laughs> this one here says the element of the experiences to think and to feel and the faculty of human consciousness and thought. So the mind for us is quite a bit bigger in a way because we're going to speak about the subconscious mind as well. Now, the subconscious mind, actually Freud, I think... Um, even spoke about the unconscious mind and there is even a mind that is above the unconscious and subconscious mind. So there are multiple concepts and I definitely understand that I think you do have the aware side of it. We all know that. We kind of now more or less estimate that it's 5 to 10 percent actually of our mind. We could even say of our brain like the activity that we aware actually very fully aware kind of structure it's very, very small. So there is a lot underneath, and that is a lot of your experience that is stored maybe in your body. Like I know um, colleagues of mine that actually say your unconscious mind is the body. And that relates to the stored emotions. So experiences are gonna be stored as emotions, for example. They communicate with your body. Your brain and your body are in constant communication, and only five to 10% of that you actually are aware of. Your mind is where your reality be begins. I don't know if you've heard of Joe Dispenza, is, um, is a guy, um, Dr. Joe Dispenza, who brings the science into all the mind work. So it's very beautiful. He um, really do, does brain scans with people that do um, meditations as well as they actually really measure the energy in the room when people come together and meditate. It's very, very interesting work. So we start by actually speaking about the conscious part of your mind. So as I said before, consciously we are able to speak, right? We are able to see, we are able to hear, we taste, we feel pain. We feel as well pain in the heart. We feel all these injuries, kind of. Like there is emotional pain, there is physical pain. 
as well we are able to reflect on things that really makes us different as well from the animals or from other animals at the end of the day we are able to produce thoughts which is a very important thing if we actually want to work with the mind is that we are able to build our own thoughts because as we're going to see thoughts have a great effect on how you go and act through your life is that clear so far or are there already some questions okay so he said your mind is where your reality begins however your thoughts ultimately blueprint your destiny and i put this before we actually speak about the subconscious mind because complicated at the same time it is not sometimes we make it more complicated than it is people will tell you you will need to meditate for eight years to actually kind of get into states that make you access the subconscious mind i have seen therapy sessions through a form that is called theta healing which theta refers to a brain wave that happens instantly so they get into these waves it's like a frequency through your brain instantly so the subconscious mind can be accessed instantly. But now we stay in the conscious level. So if I said it's 5 to 10%, we stay right now in this 5 to 10%. Already in your totally aware state of being, in your conscious state of being, you can affect the way you treat your mindset, your money mindset, quite a bit. It still will remain something underneath that will always trigger you. So you always kind of, the really ripe fruits you're just going to get when you really work deeply on the lower, on the subconsciousness. But I asked you before what kind of your mindsets are, what kind of your beliefs are that refer to money. Now, I would like to give you a little bit of a task. Um, it doesn't need to be today. You can already start with it, and sometimes it really is the opening. But just listen to yourself. So the one first important thing, actually, and it helps us to identify the things that are deeper in the subconscious mind, is really to listen to ourselves. So bas thyself, what I mean with that is kind of we talk a lot with ourselves. We talk a lot about ourselves. And although this happens quite aware, quite conscious, day in, day out, we don't really pay attention to it. So I always say, watch your mouth. I have a couple of friends and you have that too. I'm not saying I do it, I do it a lot as well. Um, you say sentences that limit yourself. Every one of us does. And we sometimes really don't pay attention. So what really helps to do sometimes, just scan through kind of your words that you use in terms of money. What do you say? Some people say, I'm just not good with money. You just said, I'm just very good in giving it away, right? Exactly. And already when you say that, that is already a conditioning. And the more you keep on giving it as well and triggers the exact path for it as well. As well, watch your mouth means what do you think about money. If you see a friend that really is good with money and that makes a lot of money, maybe there is a little bit of jealousy or whatever and you kind of bring a lot of negative emotions to this money that he has. So you kind of back off of this money or something like that. There's a lot happening on an emotional level, right? So it helps us a lot to write these down and what sometimes is very helpful as well, who do you hang out with? What, does, what do your friends actually say about money? How do they treat money? Because our surrounding is a great reflection of ourselves. We a lot actually look for mirrors in our friends. We kind of look for them kind of supporting our ideas, supporting our vision of reality. So a lot of words, thoughts, sentences that your friends might say in terms of money might be something that is anchored inside of yourself or that you even think okay words are free it's how you use them that may cost you and we're gonna go a little bit deeper into that 
Maybe let me say something to this now. So our brain works with repetition. You can trick your brain as well. So you can kind of really make your brain believe something. You can really make your mind believe something. If you keep on repeating the sentence, I just, I'm really good at giving money away. I'm really good at giving money away. You might have said this already quite a lot to yourself. So this is already a pathway that is built. So your brain really likes the familiar and it will keep on repeating it and it will keep on looking for proof of actually proving that what you tell it is true. And then there is the connection in the body. So your, your brain is communicating with the body all the time, which means you create your reality, right? Every single day, because everything you think, everything you say has a physical and an emotional reaction, right? Meaning when you keep on saying the same thing, it's a very familiar pathway. It's very comfortable to stay in that matter, which also means, though, that you can turn it around. And it's it's very it's quite it's quite a um, counterintuitive thing to say. But I actually tested it recently with a friend of mine who hates to work out, but she finds it helps her so much because she has quite a chronic fatigue. And she's like, I just can't do it. It's annoying me so much. I just don't like it. And I said, keep on telling yourself how much you actually love it. Keep on telling yourself how much you love it. Smile to yourself while you say it. And do this as much as you can. And see how it changes. The thing is, it does change. There is a lot of repeti repetition that you have to do. But things like that really change because it triggers the emotion and the reaction in your body. So if you can change, let's go into something you all know, the placebo effect. It goes a bit more into the beliefs, right? But we all know that there are scientific researches about the placebo. So people that take a pill, one group takes the pill with the medicine, others take the pill without the medicine and they still have the same results. I mean, there is a bit more shades into it, but just let it break down like that. So that means actually just by believing into taking the medicine, you are able to heal your body, right? So you are able to switch something in your body, to really reprogram something in your body. What you can reprogram when you only think differently. Does it make sense? Yeah? Good. I do have a very little, because we're such a small group as well, it's going to be a very little exercise for you. So I just invite you to take place in that. So just sit down and close your eyes. As you're sitting already, maybe try to have both feet on the ground and just have your hands on your thighs. Good. And just close your eyes. Nice. Like that everyone is doing that. Lovely. Good. Now just breathe in and out. Keep on breathing in and out. Just focusing on the breath for the moment. Keep on breathing only through your nose. Really feeling each and every inhalation, each and every exhalation. And listen to every single thing that is happening around you. Feel the air on your skin. Still feeling the breath. Scanning through further parts of your body. Feeling your lungs expanding a little bit. Maybe your stomach. Maybe feel the surface you're sitting on your feet touching the ground, the fabric of your clothes, and you still hear everything happening around you. Maybe you hear someone chatting, maybe you hear the wind, maybe you hear an order being made, some technique, someone is 
working on its bike. Stuff is happening around you, but you are just in the present moment. You keep on returning to your breath. You keep on absorbing everything that is happening around you. And then I want you to imagine a place that you really like to be in. It might be the beach, maybe even the water. Maybe it's a place inside. Maybe it is a person that you really like to be with. And just really... And I want you to totally feel that situation as well. Really feel these positive emotions. If it's in the beach, feel the sand underneath your feet. If it's a person that you like to look into the eyes, feel the love that is coming through connecting to a person. Just really let your whole body be filled by this feeling. Every single corner of your body. Good. Keep your eyes closed. Keep on producing this feeling. I'm now going to repeat something I said before. Your thoughts, what comes out of your mouth, what you just have reproduced in your mind has a great effect on how you live your life. Your thoughts can produce a blueprint that leads you through your destiny. Now imagine yourself in one year from now, a place where you want to be, something that you want to have achieved, something that you want to have, something that you want to have get rid of as well, that you want to have given away, given up. And just feel how good it feels to be in that position, to be that person that you imagine. And then I want you to just pay attention what kind of thoughts right away come to your mind. Good, and then take another deep inhalation here. And with the next exhalation, softly open your eyes. Great, welcome back. <laughs> Good, just keep on breathing in and out. How do you feel? <laughs> okay, so what I just did with you it's a very basic tool. One basic tool here is breathing. We really forget this every once in a while, what the breathing does. It has a very physical effect at first, and it really helps us to get into the present body. So if we want to go deeper into subconscious situations, for example, we need to be present in the moment. It is actually something has to do with it. No, it's, it's brain waves. All of this are brain waves. So a child that is, before a child turns seven, it is in the theta brain wave. So if you imagine a child playing around, a child is not sitting on a chair, a child is sitting on a throne, right? This is a scepter. I have like this massive thing, I don't even know what it's called, but like, what a child does is it's in a world full of emotion. And it's a theta brainwave. So it's a lower frequency that we actually act in every day. So our frequency enhances. What this state is, this theta state, is a very subconscious state. There is little or no programming. So what this programming is actually is, imagine you grow up and you want to be a functional part of your family. So you have to learn patterns that kind of keep you up in society, right? All these are programs. Now, most of the programs, obviously, we need to do because we want to be a functional part of society. We want to connect with people, and that actually means we have, to, uh, like we have to adjust to some rules. But a lot of things kind of leave negative pattern inside of ourselves. So that is where we go into the limiting beliefs, right? So that is why sometimes in meditation, as well as in other thoughts, 
forms of healings, we want to go back into these brain waves, right? And I'm going to speak about this a little bit more. We're diving down into the subconscious now. And again, as I said before, it's a concept, right? So it is something that we can't touch. We can measure it now, actually. That's why I refer to Joe Dispenza. Very interesting work, what he does. But the subconscious, as I said, is around 90 to 95% of you, of what runs you through the day. I had the slide before, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> at the very beginning, until you learn how to run your mind, your mind runs you. What I mean by that is, and as I said before, we kind of build a program inside ourselves, right? We have a lot of experiences that we made during our life. Some of them are very positive, others are negative, and they leave an imprint inside of ourselves that keeps on bringing us into one direction. And the thing is, it is all in the subconsciousness. So before you access it, you are kind of an autopilot. I always like to say as well, it's like a secret screenplay to your life. And your brain keeps on directing, directing, directing. That is, I'm not enough. Somewhere very deep down. It's a very common limiting belief. We all kind of have more or less this belief in different kind of words somewhere stored in ourselves now if you meet this person and she he whatever is kind of acting weird which it doesn't matter why but what you might feel is i did something wrong like i did something wrong i i really annoyed this person i did something that totally upset her so you get into a emotional reproduction of this belief right does it make sense so what happens is you perceive that the other person, what, it, what she said, what she is doing, through your kind of, it's glasses that you have on as well. It's kind of your perception just because of this programming that is happening at the back of your head or inside of your heart or wherever it is stored, right? So why I said I really like this exercise. Sometimes it is quite good if we kind of go into this state of total well-being right when we feel very connected with a loved person or in a place where we feel safe and very held supported loved right if it is a very good place of use there are a lot of positive emotions that trigger us so it's quite a good trick if you are facing a difficult situation to actually use these sort of emotions because they change your perception of what you are experiencing in that very moment instantly. Are you still with me? Does it make sense? Like for me, it's a very good tool and it works very well with people that are in conflictuous situations in the work, working world as well. Because especially, not especially, let's just say, wherever you are in the high alpha world, people keep on fighting a lot about work topics, right? It's a lot of emotion actually going on about work topics. Now, you could face a situation with this rage, anger, or you can bring it back and just enhance another emotion inside of yourself and react totally different, right? So these emotions totally change the way you behave, even the way you perceive what you're experiencing right now. Now, your thoughts really influence your emotions. So we want to be very aware of what we think. We want to choose what we think. We are able, as human beings, we are actually able to make choices what we think. On a subconscious level, we are unfortunately not just able to make a choice what we think. We can, but it's not as easy accessible as our total consciousness, right? So there are, there are tools to kind of find out if you are at the right subconscious belief, at the right limiting belief. People do muscle testing for it. Maybe you have heard of it. The body knows things before we actually know it. So, for example, yes, a person holds the arm out, you say yes, you say no, and you will see that 
it depends on the person, eh? but with the no, the energy goes down a little bit. So the body reacts to these words. And you can do this with the limiting beliefs. I asked you before to write down your limiting beliefs, and I said maybe you go through your days as well and kind of write down the sentences that come up, as well what came up in this micro-meditation that we just did, like just these thoughts that come up, it brings you usually into the first layer, let's say, of the beliefs. Then you go a bit deeper, you go a bit deeper, and usually we have quite a strong feeling if we actually hit our beliefs. So if I throw some words at you, like, I am not enough, if you open up, kind of play it around a bit, then you most likely have a certain feeling to it already. All right, but as I said, like these muscle testing, for example, are quite good. Sometimes in a healing sessions that I have with clients from the outside, I ask a couple of questions. It's, it's quite obvious to see sometimes. So that is obviously when you speak to a close friend of yours, a close friend of yours might be able to reflect and see other things that you see as well. So the first step is identify. The second step, and that is important, is you have to prove that it's actually not the truth. Now, that's sometimes very difficult. Like in um, psychotherapy, for example, they do behavioral tests for that. Through what I called before theta healing, people manage to change it in an instant. Through hypnotherapy, people manage to change it in an instant. These changes as well are pretty permanent. You are always able to rebuild certain patterns. So you might rebuild a negative belief as well that is healed for quite a while. Um, but you want to prove it's false. So for example, if you say to yourself, I am not enough, and you go to the cause of it, maybe you even can go down. And in hypnotherapy, that's what happens. You go down to the very kind of root of it. Why? Where did you actually build those beliefs? And then you keep on asking yourself, okay, so does it make sense in your nowadays life actually to think this belief? There are sometimes beliefs as well that refers to the outer world, like women are evil. So a man might have this belief somewhere inside of himself. Obviously, women have this as well, like men are evil, relationships are bad, they are painful, whatever it is, right? So it is very difficult to actually relate to a person to build a relationship. So if you want to twist it around... You look for proofs in your surrounding that it's actually not as true as it is stored inside of yourself. It's not an absolute truth. There might be a relationship that has been painful. It doesn't necessarily mean that all the relationship in the world are being painful, right? So you kind of look for proofs that prove this belief as false. And then you want to replace it. You want to exchange it. So, for example, if we say women are evil, money is the root of all evil, you could as well say women are not always evil. There are very cool women around, you know. You just look for beliefs that are not necessarily the total opposite because your brain will need some time to digest it. Some people replace it very radically in turning it around. I believe in subtle changes a little bit more because these beliefs are there because they have been true. They have been protecting you at one moment. They're not true in your present state. I spoke about theta brainwaves. And neuroplasticity is something that is very, very, very intriguing. If you want to work with meditation, if you want to work with subconscious setting, neuroplasticity actually explains to you a little bit more the connection of your brain, your subconsciousness, the way you use your words and what it triggers in your body and how it actually, in fact, affects your reality. So I'm just going to read it. Neuroplasticity is the muscle building part of the brain. The things we do often, we become stronger at. And what we don't use fades away. That is the physical basis of why making a thought or action over and over again increases its power. Over time, it becomes automatic, a part of us. We literally become what we think 
and do. And this is pretty true. So the neuroplasticity as well is the ability of the brain to shape reality, to imagine things and to make them real because everything you think or do has a physical reaction, an emotional reaction in your body. Okay, any questions here so far? If I drown you with all the theory, you let me know, right? <laughs> Good. So, speaking about the mind, speaking about the subconscious mind, about theta brain waves, about neuroplasticity, the brain has a couple of things how it works, how it is run, and how it runs you. I just put a few things on there. So, we do have <coughs> certain, we actually sometimes say results or just effects that turn out on the open. So it might be a sickness that you have. It might be your money mindset. You blocking success. You blocking the love. You blocking stuff, right? You just are being blocked. You blocking health, love, money, whatever it is. It usually is an internal dialogue problem. Meaning, it is exactly that what happens in your subconsciousness and between your subconsciousness saying your brain and your body all the time. So you want to go into that dialogue instead of solving the outer, the outer, the outer state. So we sometimes say if you want to achieve something in your life and you have to work really, really hard for it, it is probably already an indicator that you don't have the program for it. You might have heard the sentence that rich people stay rich, poor people stay poor. And I said before that in the age from zero to seven, we develop these blueprints, we develop these programs. So imagine a boy growing up in a very rich family, him being maybe not the smartest in the world. It doesn't matter. He learns a behavior that runs as a program in his subconscious mind so that he can just reproduce that behavior which encourages his wealth. Like he is used to it. He's going to treat it the same way. He's going to run his life. It's a program that runs at the back. The same applies to poor people, right? So <clears throat> a poor person might be super smart, like a super brainy, but never learned the program that it takes to actually create a different reality. As long as you don't access this program and change it, reprogram it, rewire your brain, you don't access a different sort of reality for yourself. And that really affects your brain, mind and money setting. So if you want to achieve a different sort of reality, and sometimes these money blockages are a lot about, yes, yes, I get to kind of this income, but I don't know why I just don't get higher of it. There might be an underlying belief. I had a client, she was exactly like that. She always got to a certain point, but she didn't get any further. And we found out in a few sessions, actually just a few sessions, that there was something that made her, like she went back a little bit, with her family coming from a Latin family growing up in Latin America. Her parents split up. Her mom made her actually go and ask her dad for money all the time. And she feel super bad about that. Her dad turned away from her at the end of the day. So there was a super negative connotation towards that money. So she had a couple of beliefs. Money makes people turn away from me if I ask for it. I'm not really allowed to have more. And we went a bit further back and it kind of re re repeating this pattern. So we are programmed in a way. We all have these programs. And to really change our reality, if we want to go to a different peak up here, if she wants to raise her income to a certain level, if, he, she, if she wants to raise her reality, upgrade her reality what she has to do is change the inside change the inner dialogue make the unfamiliar familiar 
the brain really likes familiar things. So if you are, it causes a lot, like it, it kind of reflects a lot in addiction. I'm a total coffee addict. I hate not having my coffee in the morning. My brain knows this quite well since I don't even know how many years. It's totally familiar. I get up in the morning and I want my coffee. It's super familiar for the brain. I have tried, and now I'm kind of getting there, I have tried many, many years to overcome this behavior. It is actually easily changeable if you want to. I decided <laughs> I don't really want to. I'm kind of sticking with this one addiction. What I'm saying here though is that your brain creates pathways into your body. The more you think a thought, the more you do something, the more your brain shapes into that direction. It's actually what we said about before the neuroplasticity. There are little pathways. Just imagine there are kind of ways from your brain into your body that are super familiar, that are super known. So if you want to change that, your brain is like, wait, what? This is not really comfortable. Like, that sucks totally, right? So me not having my coffee in the morning will make me be the most awful person in the morning. I'd probably be really, really annoying. And I totally will not like that, okay? Actually, if you want to change something in your brain, try to really start with the unfamiliar. A lot of people are very unfamiliar with praise. It's very difficult for them to praise themselves or to receive praise. What I mean is like people say to you, wow, you did this amazing, I loved it. And you're like, yeah, you know, but actually my sister can do that better. Or you say something else that kind of puts your value down, you know, because not everyone has that, but a lot of people have this. They're very unfamiliar with praise. Praise yourself. Tell yourself how good you are in that. Keep on praising yourself. We learned a lot actually to not do this because it kind of goes into an egocentric or whatever people say to us. Like we don't really do this anymore. It is more common to kind of put down the praise that is around ourselves. It's not the only unfamiliar that you can do. I, I uh, refer to my friend that hates exercise. Her, I keep on repeating, she hates exercise since all her life. It doesn't really change it, right? But the unfamiliar thing is to say, I really love exercising in the morning and smile with it. Actually, I think it was Joe Dispenza. No, it was Bruce Lipton, another name that you might want to put down. Someone that writes about beliefs as well. Beautiful scripts that he says. He said, um, if you meet an unhappy person and that unhappy person keeps on repeating, I'm so happy. Yeah, but you really look not really happy. Yeah, but I'm so happy. And just repeat it. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. There's going to be the moment where it switches and that person actually feels it. And then the sentence being said entered the subconscious mind and you don't have to repeat it anymore as well the moment it's programmed it's programmed and that's the good thing as well as the bad thing obviously your beliefs you make your beliefs then your beliefs make you make you we have been saying this quite a long time because that's what exactly refers to the programming that is going on but it is very important to understand that your beliefs make you, so I said this before as well, the limiting beliefs that kind of shape our reality, the perception of our reality. So if your beliefs make you, you really want to make good beliefs. So you really want to have nice beliefs coming out of yourself, anchor nice beliefs inside of yourselves, because this is what builds your reality. Beliefs form a blueprint, think great thoughts. I think we have been speaking about this quite a lot. But these are some concepts that are really, really important to know about the mind. However we access the subconscious mind, it is working like that. And I have another exercise for you. <laughs> it's gonna be pretty much the same exercise. So if you're gonna do with me again, pretty much the same 
travel. So sit down on your chair, put both feet on the ground, close your eyes, get down into your breathing. And this one now is really about your money mindset. It's a mini exercise again. It really doesn't take a lot of time. So for now, just breathe, focus on your breathing. Have your eyes closed. Just really scan through your body. Feel what's happening around you. Focus on your senses. Feeling every inhalation entering your nose. Every exhalation going out through your nose. The wind that touches your skin. The fabric of your clothes being in touch with your skin. The wind going through your hair. And focus on each and every sound, each and every noise, each and every single sound that you can listen to. Whatever it is. Just be fully aware, still paying attention only to your breathing, but hearing everything, feeling everything. Good. And then you go back to that feeling that you created before, that very positive feeling. You can just straight go back into the situation, back with that person that you were imagining before. But it is all about the feeling that you created inside of yourself. So bring that feeling right back. Let it fill every part of your body, every single cell of your body. Good. And then I want you to imagine you just have the amount of money that you would like to have these days, this month this year and just connect this money to what you want to do with it do you want to buy something for the people you love do you want to invest into some training that you were desiring to do for so long maybe it is a very simple thing like you wanted to buy this dress or you wanted to take your family on a trip Whatever it is that this money you desired, the event, the thing, the feeling that you desire to create with this money, get really specific there. If it is this family trip or this trip for yourself, going somewhere just by yourself, just feel each and every situation. Get into that feeling. If you wanted to give something to someone, just look into their eyes and see how good they feel when they receive whatever you wanted to give to them. And enhance this feeling, spiral this feeling in your body. And go a little bit further Imagine yourself being that person having this sort of money. This sort of money is related to you being in a present state of your life, maybe a present state of your business that you are seeking to achieve. So feel that you're doing exactly that sort of business job, that you're offering a service that relates to making that sort of money, that you shaped a product that relates to that money and how you feel in that role of being that service provider, having that product, having that shop, having that studio, whatever it is. Just really feel how it feels to contribute with your work to whatever you want to contribute to, that person that you want to be. Good. And then take another deep inhalation. And with the next exhalation, slowly open your eyes. Good. Welcome back again. So that was 
the second visualization, right? So what you did actually is you connected to the vision that you have, your emotions. That's a very basic tool as well. Eventually, this is going to affect your subconsciousness as well, but it definitely affects in the first place your emotions and your emotions are everything right so if you would be doing this every single day we say at the end of the day we actually say in the morning we don't say at the end of the day i just used a phrase but in the morning and in the evening close to our bedtimes we are very close to these brain waves so these are the times where we want to scan in with ourselves and as well, we say, instead of starting our day, switching off, switching on our phone, connecting in all the social media accounts that we have, actually do a not programmed thing, but sit down, ignore that our body is screaming for coffee, is screaming for a shower, wants to be already in the car driving somewhere, sit down and just see what is coming up. Focus on your breath, be present in the moment. It's about the presentness. So the subconscious mind is the mind of feelings, of emotions, and it is the present mind. Like your awareness, your conscious thing, is the past and the future. You're constantly thinking about what is happening in the future. Where do I want to go? And what is as well there is this has happened to me yesterday. It sucked so much. It's still affecting me. So these things are in the awareness. These things are in the conscious mind. Your unconscious mind is actually the full present. So if you <coughs> manage to put yourself into that present state of mind, and you do this every morning, you'd be amazed what thoughts come up to you at that time of the day when you kind of interrupt your programming, your total routine that you have been probably doing for years without even paying attention to it. All right, does that make sense, sort of? Good. I said I did a little bit of a takeout for you. So I have a PDF. You just sent me an email and I sent out the PDF. Just say talk at Genius and I sent you a PDF. It's basically the presentation with a little bit more of information what we spoke about today. And I'm absolutely happy to give it to you. I said before I'm going to take you on a money love date. <laughs> and again, money is energy. So kind of dealing from this emotional setting of money being something that is bad. I put together a couple of things just to enhance your money mentality. Now these things happen more on a very conscious level, but it reflects as well how much you already can do on a conscious level. I'm a big fan of working on the subconscious mind. This is what I do. This is my profession, right? And it is the major shifts that people can do happen in this all programmed thing that kind of triggers your day-to-day -day emotions, your day-to-day -day actions. It shapes your reality. At the end of the day, though, all these things, and I explain a little bit more about these little things, can already do something in your day-to-day -day life. And I really want you to take something away with you now, not enhancing the fear. You can start with these meditations, working, accessing your subconscious mind. Absolutely, no problem. It's totally possible. But there are a couple of things that you can do as well. So the money love date, <laughs> it's money coaches use that a lot. Um, it just means instead of does any one of you sometimes freak out when you open the page of your bank account? It's like sometimes you're like, no, I don't want to look at it. I'm not quite sure. Am I minus already? Is it still okay? Do I have to do some transfers from another account? Ask this client to actually pay me or whatever. Like sometimes it's very scary to look at our accounts, right? And the money love date turns it around. It is a bit more kind of, I mean, it has to do with this abundance sort of mindset. So the scarcity mindset obviously kind of puts you in this lack situation. There's a lot of negative emotion coming in. But you won't really receive that money. Imagine you go to this client. You have to call him or her and say, can you pay me now, please, please? Because my bank account is actually pretty low. I mean, if he already owes you the money. 
it doesn't really matter. But obviously, if you ask someone to actually give you money for a project, you want, want to sell something, that is probably not the best mindset. So it kind of opens up into a bit more of a, you know, a bit more of a state of actually being very comfortable. Give more and more often. So we say, wherever your attention goes, your energy flows, or where your energy flows, your attention goes. So if you want to be more receiving, and I said this before, breathe in, breathe out, you want to give as well. And it can be very simple. You know that in Bali, we sometimes have to pay to park in the beach, stuff like that. Or we order Gojek. Just give more. It's not even, it's not, it's not even referring to, of course, if you don't have $1,000 to give for this NGO right now, that's all right. But I mean, it is in the kind of money goes, money comes. It's just a source of energy at the end of the day. I'm just meaning have like an ease, a bit more of an ease with that money that gives you an ease of receiving that money as well. Write a money letter with love. I've never done it, I must say. I know that people do it. Um, it is more a little bit about actually reflecting on your money mindset and encountering a couple of those thoughts and beliefs that you have with money. So a money letter and the with love you can actually put a bit to the back because that comes after. First, you just want to find out how is my relationship actually with money. If you write a letter to money, you will find interesting things. Actually, it's not true. I actually did it. I didn't do a full letter. I was just sitting in a bus and wrote a little bit of it. But yeah, it opens quite a lot of your relationship about money. It's very interesting. And then that's why I said with love, you would like to turn it around. So it would maybe indicate that you have more of a scarcity mindset when it comes to money. Maybe you can change this a little bit already in just writing it down. Look at it. Feel this in your head. Kind of change your thinking, change your words, change your speak about money. Raise your frequency. Get scared is one of my favorite ones. Because the moment we get scared, the moment we push ourselves out of our comfort zone, it's most likely that these limiting beliefs show up. For me, most recently, I took a major investment. And I couldn't sleep. And what came up was, I'm never going to make it. Like, I'm never going to go there. Why did I even think spending that money? So I kept on kind of looking into that, kept on working with this. And what you find sometimes when you get really scared is actually the essence of your problem, the essence of your belief system. Does it make sense in a way? Hang with your crowd to actually see what they say about money. But this one here refers to a little bit more the people we surround ourselves with are a bit of the reflection of our reality, right? So let's keep it in the money and scarcity mindset maybe. If you are broke, you keep on repeating to yourself, I'm broke. Your friends say all the time, I'm broke. It's actually, I have a little story to this as well. I was a lot in Barcelona when it was, when there was the crisis going on in Barcelona. And I was just going there from work, and I, s I met my friends in the afternoon, had a coffee with them. They were all meeting, having drinks in the middle of the afternoon. And they were like, oh, there are no jobs around here. No, there are no jobs around here. Fuck, we really don't have money. There are no jobs these days, and I'm just overqualified. And I was just wondering, why don't you use all your creativity to kind of build something out of that? Why don't you do something else than sitting in a cafe? Being in this victimhood, no, there are no jobs. That's what the papers say. That's what my boss said to me, firing me. That's what my friends say. Keep on repeating it. So the people that you're surrounded by, that you surround yourself with, are actually a reflection of your reality as well. So you might choose them a bit wiser as well. It doesn't mean that you have to say bye-bye to all your friends, obviously, but it might mean that you are a bit more sensitive, especially if you want to change something, something that is visible eventually on the outside. 
be sensitive with the information that you share because you are in a vulnerable state. The moment you change, it is probably very vulnerable. Those of you that have been creating a business that are entrepreneurs know how vulnerable the first stages of it are. So there are a lot of people that are being triggered by people that change and that kicks into their own fears. So they might kind of reflect to you, are you crazy like right now building a business that's really stupid? You never like you never make money out of it. Just hearing it from your friends is a painful thing and it might bring you down. So you don't really want to do that. Meditate, also meditate. And I have another one, and meditate. I'm not going to go through all of these. And obviously, I'm a big fan of meditation. And I think it's one of the major tools. It's actually the major tools that you can do by yourself to access your subconscious mind. There are people that say, and I totally put my name underneath it, you can have, achieve anything that you want, anything that you can think of, to really, really, really programming your mind. Your mind is like a laser. It really works for you if you know how to work it. And meditation is the major tool you have. Even the tools I use, hypnotherapy, even theta healing, it's all meditation at the end of the day. It's someone that guides you a little bit more and probably faster into deeper states, but you have the tools inside of you already it's already there so meditation is just a major thing give yourself permission a lot of people are actually blocked in receiving money if you have the mindset of money is an evil thing it's obviously not very easy to give yourself permission so it links to all these kind of limiting things do your numbers is very similar to the money love dates so you want to actually know what kind of money you need instead of always dropping yourself away from that kind of calculate what you spend what you want to make what is your comfort zone in making money and see how you would meet these goals what kind of product what kind of service actually get you there that is a, that is an important step that relates to once you have your mindset aligned with that it's easier for you to create that sort of income as well because you have certain numbers. You can even do the exercise that we did before. You write your numbers down. You know what you want to use this money for. It's energy again. And you just sit down, do your exercise, really connect to the effect this money has on your life or on the life of others and just trigger the emotion in it it gets easier to ask for the money. Good, as I say, spend it as well. It's very, to give higher coach is always a good idea. Dream it, affirm it, get it. We did this as well. So these are just a couple of suggestions as well to kind of raise your frequency, raise your mentality. Okay. I didn't pay my canvas today. I put this slide on there, so you still see the canvas in the back. This is time now for, hey, <laughs> Q&As. So if you have questions, now is the moment. <laughs> if you can, uh, yeah, what was, um, I don't know if it was said at the start, but what was your story of how you changed your money mindset or was it always... Like, what's your money story or whatever? My money story? Yeah. <laughs> My money story rather is like a full mindset story, I would say. Mindset is, um, I said this before, yes. So my story is I come from corporate, I come from movement at the same time. I've always been in between both worlds. And I shifted eventually from being in corporate to actually teaching people out of corporate on physical things, on movement topics, and on mindset as well. So for me, <coughs> the moment you change something deeper in the subconscious mind, it doesn't only reflect in your money thing. My major blockages actually have been not necessarily in the money thing. I have never, like before, I didn't have a very positive emotion towards money. Mon money was always like a negative topic in my family as well. So I really needed to kind of clear this out. 
But working with beliefs is so deeply anchored. Like if you shift your deeper limiting beliefs, your deeper subconscious beliefs, your program, it affects more areas of your life. You can as well go down to very clearly to money related topics saying as the, the reference I had with this one client of mine that she said, it's okay. <laughs> See, I don't know how old he is, but that's like the theta state. It's pretty good. <laughs> Little programming going on. Um, it's, a, it's a very good state. It's what we want to do actually as well. So shifting these programs inside of yourself relate to a number of topics. So my major topics actually have been success and health. So I needed to change patterns that were rather related to health and to success. So I was blocking a lot of health, like I had an autoimmune condition. I still have it, but I managed actually to build, like I have a Hashimoto, which is when the immune system attacks the thyroid and eats the tissue of the thyroid. My thyroid was tiny and it is just growing back again which is what doctors told me is never possible to, to actually happen, but I do have the scans of it. And this is the communication of your brain with your body. It is a major healing capacity. So saying this, why I choose money mindset, it is something I feel in the crowd that is surrounding me as well as in the clients that I see. It's, it's a major topic. It's always a very... Um, famous, popular topic. At the end of the day, and I said this a couple of times, when you change something deeper down, when you change your programming, it doesn't only affect your money mindset. There are more things that kind of can be shifted. And probably you need to shift something else to actually enhance your wealth situation. Does it answer your question? Okay. Great, more questions, please. If there are no questions, that's fine as well. Um, you can always email me as well. Just shoot me an email if you have more questions. I also have free discovery calls um, that is bookable through my website if you just are more interested in how I do the work, how I actually work on subconscious beliefs and so on. Or you just write me an email, however. Lovely to have this little crowd around and if there is something that you want to not share in public but want to ask me after, please come see me. I'm going to be around for a little while. Thank you so much.